right, uh, everybody, uh, welcome to this year's membership seminar. Uh, I'm Doug Wells, your national membership director. Um, so excited to be here with y'all. Uh, by round of applause, how is everybody enjoying the convention so far this year? Great stuff. Uh, the entire DAD team, uh, you know, worked very, very hard to, to put this event on. And, um, super excited about our new badges and the new registration system and uh, leveraging technology uh, <clears throat> so that we can, uh, you know, drag ourselves, kicking and screaming with the game of the 21st century. But, uh, so far, it's all being received very well. Uh, we haven't uh, turned on all the capabilities yet, you know, some baby steps, making sure the basics are working right. So, uh, so it's good stuff. Really appreciate you all being here. Uh, before I get going too much further, I uh, just want to introduce a couple of people. Uh, Robin Higgins, if you could stand up, please, the membership manager. Uh, the, the sales pitch really because that's what it is so an elevator pitch hot 
how to uh, help people communicate the importance of joining the AV and to give them all the fingers that they need to hopefully close that uh, deal uh, when they run into folks that are eligible. Um, so, you know, we're just right now calling it the elevator pitch for recruiting. We've got a lot of stuff fleshed out. It's not quite ready for prime time, uh, but the idea is that there will be a digital version. So if you're talking to someone about uh, joining, and we'll say, well, you know, what, what are the benefits of joining? Well, you can uh, share a video that will articulate that. Why do we, uh, why do we charge for membership? You can share a video uh, that will um, that'll articulate that as well. So again, just by trying to put another arrow or two into your recruiting quivers. So the intent is to have a, a digital version and a hard version. Obviously, there will be much more, uh, you know, robust capabilities with the digital version. Um, it'll have links to important documents and resources. Uh, and the exciting thing uh, that the committee really wanted to ensure is that there was a place to include um, uh, customizable talking points. Uh, not every chapter across the country is the same or involved to the same degree in one program or another, another uh, chapter might be. So, uh, you know, if you're a chapter that's strong on uh, drivers, you should highlight that. If you're a chapter that's uh, you know active in a state capital, uh, you know pushing for veterans benefits, you should highlight that. Uh, so we just want to make sure that everybody has the tools that they need uh, to be effective recruiters. Uh, and we don't, we definitely don't want you struggling for any answers that might come your way. Um, so as I progress through the, the presentation here, there might be some stuff in here that you've seen before, uh, as the old. Japanese uh, saying goes, the, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Uh, and so we're trying to bring us out of the, the coat and the lays. I want to remind you all of some things. Um, but just, you know, just remember, I can't do it all from headquarters. Uh, I need all of your help and assistance in recruiting as many folks as we can, and not only recruiting them, but embracing them and mentoring them and bringing them into the organization. Uh, you know, I can almost guarantee you that every great leader the DEB had, has had that, uh, had that happen to them. They've been recruited personally, uh, they've been mentored in the organization uh, personally, had people guide them, educate them. Those are the folks that become our great leaders. It's awesome that people out there join because I put an ad in Google or something, right? That's great. You understand the, the need for DEB, the fact that we uh, work very hard to uh, protect the benefits that we have and to acquire benefits that we may need. Uh, you know, the most prominent example right now is the recent passage of the PAC Act that we carry the guideline for. Uh, that doesn't happen without our members. It just, it just doesn't. Uh, so uh, I appreciate you all being shoulder to shoulder with me and, and doing your best to recruit folks. Um, just a quick update on this past year's uh, March Membership Madness. Uh, for those who may not know, it's a tournament that we do every year, a recruiting tournament that calculates uh, and counts all applications that are online. The reason that's important is we know that two things happen when we sign somebody up online with a credit card. One, there's a much greater proclivity for them to just pay for the membership outright and become a full life member out of the gate. Or two, if they do decide to engage in installment payments, uh, the conversion rate to full life membership is much greater than if we just take 40 bucks from somebody in the DVD. We're likely not to see from those folks again. So if you get them signed up on installments for as little as 10 bucks a month with the credit card, it's fire and forget. Okay? Uh, so, you know, please uh, uh, try to remember, you know, if at all possible, we want to get folks signed up with a credit card. And there's a lot of different ways uh, that we can help you do that. Um, and we'll talk about some more here as we move forward. But, uh, the thing with the March Membership Madness Tournament is we, we understand that, uh, uh, well, when I got to headquarters many, many moons ago now, uh, one of the first things I recognized is that at the end of the membership year, which runs from July 1st through June 30th, we would get just deluged with uh, folks trying to meet their chapter's recruitment goal. And, uh, you know, while it's, I'm happy to take memberships at any point in the year, uh, I want people to start thinking about making goal and recruiting earlier in the year. Understanding that, you know, the, the, the pocketbooks take a little bit of a hit during the holidays. 
Um, but what we're trying to do is plant that, that uh, psychological prompt that when you start hearing things on TV about conference basketball tournaments or the uh, NCAA tournament, that'll be a, a trigger to say, oh, we need to start getting on, on uh, our membership efforts here. And this is just a fun way to kind of set up a competitive dynamic between uh, the departments and they'll, they'll rally their chapters um, you know, toward this goal. And we have two ways to win. So there's the department champion, the, the uh, chapter, or pardon me, the department that goes from bracket to bracket to bracket without being defeated. A department can have an off week. They can be, you know, uh, uh, you know, really kill it in recruitment, uh, but still have an off a uh, couple few days there recruiting and end up getting knocked out of the tournament uh, champion race. But I don't want them to stop rallying folks to the cause or stop recruiting because if they recruit the most members on a percentile basis, they can become the, target, uh, the tournament MVP. Uh, so we've had many years now where the department champion and the MVP were two different departments. Uh, and this year was a great test of David versus Goliath. Uh, we ended up having in our championship game the Department of Virginia uh, versus the Department of Wyoming. The Department of Virginia did prevail, but uh, um, you know, a little while in there uh, proved that you don't have to be a, a big mega department in order to be successful in the tournament. They did an outstanding job. So let's give both the Department of Virginia and the Department of Wyoming a round of applause. So, oh, and before I go on, uh, remember it's not just the departments that get rewarded. Uh, my top two individual recruiters will also get rewarded during the uh, March Membership Madness Tournament. And they, the top two recruiters, the winner and the runner-up, get an, uh, an engraved iPad. State art, cool stuff. But they, the trick is they've got to recruit at least 25 members to be in the run. Okay? Uh, Recruiter Warrior is back up and running at full speed. Um, folks, this is the easiest way for you to recruit someone. Um, when I was a young MSO, just having come into the DAV, uh, 26 years ago, um, Ken Wolf, the then service director, pounded into me, always have a membership application on you. That was one of his biggest admonishments. Always have a membership application on you. So when you happen to run into that person that's eligible at the checkout line at the grocery store or at the, at the bar or wherever it is that you happen to be talking to somebody, you'll have the ability to recruit them right then and there. Um, this eliminates the need to have to carry a physical application around. And it also eliminates the need for you to have to remember what your membership number is all the time. So um, you've got the DAV Recruit Warrior Program at DAV.org slash warrior. All you do is uh, pull out your membership card, the, the membership number for those of you that have more than one membership that you want uh, the credit or attribution for that recruitment to go to, you plug that membership number in where it says our membership number, uh, and then that bar at the bottom there, uh, when you hit return, will uh, highlight so that you can click it, click verify membership number, and it, if that membership number that you input is valid, it will generate a personalized link for you to then share with uh, any eligible uh, member that you like. You can, you can also share this to your Facebook page, to Twitter, wherever you want. If you want to email it to somebody, you can do that. It is now a clickable link that is specific to you. So when somebody clicks on that link, it's going to bring up an application page. They're going to sign up online, and you're automatically going to get credit. The, the uh, sponsor information, your membership number, is hidden. I don't want them to see that. Don't think just because you can't see it that you're not going to get credit for it. It's hidden. I don't want them to be able to change that. Okay? So if they're using your specialized link, you're going to get credit for that recruitment. Okay? Uh, and so be warned for those of you that, you know, if you see Joel put out on his Facebook page a, a member of the membership link, don't share his link. Because he'll get credit. <laughs> Share your own link. Okay? If you have trouble with this, my staff at the national headquarters uh, is fully trained on getting you up and running with this. Um, you know, uh, 
we'll get you squared away and make sure you got it. And I've got to double check and make sure it's up and running, uh, but I asked our wonderful IT team, when you get your link here, uh, you'll now also be able to get a QR code that somebody can scan with their phone. You can put it, copy and paste it to the back of a business card, whatever you want to do, but it'll take it again to a, a specialized, personalized um, joint page just for you that has your attribution in there. So either a link or a QR code, whatever you want to rock with, you'll be able to do. So look for that uh, coming here pretty quick if it's not already on the page. Um, just want to remind everybody about the recruitment points. Uh, so as you see, you can have, you can gain one to three recruitment points uh, for every new member recruited. Why one to three? So if you sign up a member using a paper application, if they become a part life member, you get one point, and then if they convert to a full life member, there's another point given, right? If they become a full life member out of the gate, it's two points. If you sign them up online, initially when they become a part life member with installments, you get two points, and then when they convert, you get another point for a total of three points. So again, we're trying to incentivize you to sign folks up online. Uh, and you know we've, we've reminded folks of this for the past couple few years, uh, but I please share with your counterparts, especially those people that are prolific recruiters. I don't want them to lose points. But a few years back, we had to make the decision to start expiring points, just like Delta or whoever else has points programs. They don't last forever. Uh, that ends up, you know, one point essentially is a buck. And when you've got you know a thousand people that have recruited one member. Uh, that adds up. So um, we've got to make sure that we're expiring these points on a three-year rolling average. We always use your oldest points first if you buy some swag in the, in the store or whatever. But uh, you know, remember, you don't have to wait to come to convention to use your points. You can use them uh, at dmetrophyawards.com. You can call the store at national headquarters. Uh, there's all sorts of ways that you can redeem those points and just do a fantastic job helping us uh, reward you for your hard work there. Um, but the big thing is just, you know, reminding people that you get points uh, for every recruitment uh, that you expire. So once they go beyond three years old, we'll start uh, knocking them off there. Um, and also going back to the Recruit a Warrior um, program, be on the lookout. Every year we do a Recruit a Warrior Challenge. Uh, and you have to use the app to uh, the link to recruit folks, uh, but every time you recruit a member, you get one entry into a drawing. So if you recruit 10 members, you get 10 entries. Uh, and we've been pretty regular doing a thousand bucks for that. So if we get 150, 200 members that come into that, that's just a cost of about three memberships. That's a deal I'll take all day long, right? So a thousand bucks, we're going to look at doing some other fun type stuff, but uh, We'll probably do it, we will do it again this fall. Um, so we'll be on the lookout for that. And uh, Felicia Graver's in here. Uh, she was my first winner. Uh, she uh, donated a bunch of it back to her, to DEV and to the chapter of the department and took her kids to the Disney World or something like that, the grandkids. So it's awesome stuff. And it's a nice way to help pay off those, those holiday expenses, right? Um, Want to talk about, uh, uh, goals and hot lists. Uh, again, a lot of this stuff is born out of conversations that I've had since I've been here with folks. Um, so, as a reminder, only new memberships count towards your chapter's goal. Paying off a membership no longer counts towards goal. Uh, going back to that conversation I was having about uh, having deluged with members. Uh, a lot of that were member payoffs that were happening at the end of the year to so chapters to make gold. That's not what I want you all to do. Uh, we have those resources donated to us by a generous American public, and let's spend that money on service, not memberships, uh, as far as payoffs go. It's great to do like an incentivization, you know, I, the chapter will pick up 20 if you pay the first 20, something like that. That's all terrific. I don't want you paying off memberships in max, though. Um, we want to make sure these members have skin in the game, right? Uh, 
Um, I want you to, to proselytize the good word of the EAB to the masses, to the people that I haven't communicated with yet. Once you get them into the door, if you can get them in the door as a full life member, awesome. That is the perfect scenario, right? But if you're only able to close the deal on part life membership, that's perfect too. I don't want you shying away from signing people up as part life members. Get them in the door and let me work on getting them converted, okay? Uh, that's the, the deal I made with you. Um, so new part life and new full life memberships count towards your, making your goal. Um, for a long, long time, the National Membership Director would use kind of an arbitrary formula to establish goals, and it did penalize chapters that had a lot of part life members in it. Uh, and so I, I didn't like that because it made people shy away from signing part life members up. Well, maybe that's all a new member can afford at the time, right? Um, and there were other chapters that would actively just focus on recruiting full life membership, you know, out of the gate, um, and to keep their part life members low. So neither one of those scenarios, pardon me, are good. Uh, so, so we eliminated that through changing the goal standard. But how do how do we want to establish goal? Right? We want to make sure that we're using some kind of real world metric. Um, so we developed what's called the hot list. So I get a, a, a roster of names of people that I know are like 99.99% all eligible for membership in DAD. They're, they've got a service-related injury or disease that they suffered. Uh, they've got wartime service that they're being, that they're being uh, you know, they're being treated at the VA Medical Center for something that affect. We gather data from our disaster relief efforts. There's all sorts of places. So people on this hot list are. Um, you know, the viable level prospects. Uh, and that's what I want you to tap into. Um, they, uh, uh, those lists are available for you to request from the membership department at National Headquarters. You give us a specific list of zip codes, we can crank out a hot list for you. Um, I welcome the departments to do it. Uh, we can give it to you for the whole department. You can share it at your district meetings or however you want to go about doing it. Uh, but certainly, I don't want to put you in a scenario where I establish a goal and require you to, um, to recruit so many members, but then not tell you where to live. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to marry up the two. So our goals are based on the hot list. Now, not every uh, chapter is going to be created equal as it pertains to the hot list, right? You're going to have a lot more people on the hot list, like the member, prospective members, in Killeen, Texas, than Eastern Rhode Island, just by sheer population, right? So the chapter in Killeen, Texas, is gonna have a much bigger goal than that chapter in Rhode Island. If you're a chapter that falls into that category where you don't uh, have a ton of prospective members readily available to you via the hot list, uh, then you'll have a minimum of 10 that you need to recruit to attain your goal for that um, So. You know, if you have questions or concerns about the goal for your chapter, how we're establishing uh, that stuff, again, please just give me a call or shoot me an email. And we'll, we'll help you figure it out. Uh, but how that's all generated typically is through the department. Annually, we send them a zip code spreadsheet. They tell us what zip codes belong to what chapters, and then we put it through the algorithm, and that's how we generate goal. Uh, I have a little bit of a sliding scale, and we look at how many folks we're losing over the year, we want to make sure we replenish our ranks and we grow a little bit. That's how you're seeing uh, those goals be established on the population center. Um, you can request those from us a couple of different ways. Uh, unfortunately, departments and chapters still do have to reach out to us. I'm looking at a way to automate this. Um, it's probably a little bit over the horizon still on that as we resolve some other uh, technologies. But uh, uh, you can just give us a call, shoot us an email, or use the membership list request form that's available on the member resources tab of DU.org. Uh, so I hope everybody appreciates this news. When you went to the members only section, you know, you can do this with a boo. Who hated putting in your membership number to get to the members only section? Boo, right? I don't like it either. It's gone. So all of those uh, resources now uh, that were in the members only section, whether it's the forms, the AFR kits, the Officer election reports, all that stuff. 
is now just a couple of clicks away. You go to, uh, to DAB.org, hover over where it says membership, and drop down menu, and then you will come down, click on member resources. You're in business. If something needs validation, like with our DAB member management program, we have a specific validation protocol for that. So there's nothing you're going to get to um, in our uh, member resources section that you're going to break or have to worry about. All of our videos are there. Everything is good to go right there. So if you have any questions about that, again, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, so how do you use your hot list uh, when you get it? Um, so again, the hot list reflects the most viable prospects in your chapter's jurisdiction. I don't want to give you uh, prospective members who might have solicited 15 or 20 times and for whatever reason, they've never decided to pull the trigger on, uh, on membership in the um, You know, I want to give you the newest uh, folks that we've acquired. So anybody that you see on your hot list, I may reach out to them once. That's typical, twice at, at, at the most. Um, but we've actually had uh, folks, you know, thinking outside the box, tackling, uh, tackling things from a different angle, and they've had some success around the country. But uh, you can, of course, mail or call prospects to invite them. Now, calling, it will take a little bit of work because uh, I don't typically have phone numbers on the hot list. You're gonna have names and addresses. But Google, other resources, there's ways that you can figure out uh, phone numbers for folks. Um, but shoot them a postcard. Don't spend a ton of money on, on posting, but sending a postcard and inviting people out to a chapter function or a meeting or uh, whatever the case may be, uh, uh, you know, that works wonders. This one kind of, people look at me like I've got an eyeball in the middle of my forehead. But, um, I, I've seen some success with it, visiting mem prospective members at their homes. There's a reason the security system guy or the pool salesman or whoever comes around on on Sundays, knocking on doors, they might get 10 doors slammed in their faces, but two or three people are going to talk to them and invite them in. That's a success. Um, so, you know, having a quick chapter meeting, suspending the normal business, you know, once a quarter or something like that, giving each of your members, uh, you know, pairing them off and giving each of them two or three names to go visit, you know, saying, hey, how's your, how's your claim? You know, we're from the local DA chapter, how's your claim? Uh, are you to and from your medical appointments okay? You have a volunteer opportunity for us. Um, projecting these programs and services out of the community uh, at the same time that you're recruiting. And I guarantee you that when people see and recognize the value of DAB, they're going to be much more amenable to give you that credit card or write you that check for 300 bucks to become a member. DAB has always been and will always be a service first organization, right? And that's what we're about. That's the cornerstone of the um, So when you demonstrate that to folks, they're going to be chomping at the bit to, to join. Um, and so, it, you know, obviously we want to be, if you're visiting people in their homes, we want to be respectful of, you know, the COVID scenario and, and things like that. But uh, uh, certainly I want to make sure that you all have the tools that you need to, uh, to be successful out there. Um, <clears throat> For those, how many people in here are in the uh, IDAB.org slash membership portal somehow? Okay, so a few of you. Um, so if you weren't here by Friday afternoon, uh, you probably missed this, but I, I don't want you to miss out on the info. Feel free to shoot me a, um, an email and say, hey Doug, I'd like your slide deck from the IDAB.org seminar. I'd be happy to send it to you. Um, but I am going to cover a couple of pieces of information. Uh, just for everybody's edification, since we've got a larger audience here. Uh, to, if you haven't already done it, uh, you can go to mydm.org slash member-registration. Uh, and, uh, you know, register to uh, get access. So if you see over there where it says log in, there's a new user registration piece. Uh, you fill out a basic application. It's just basic information. Um, once you're done doing that, uh, you'll get an email back that says, hey, we got your registration. However, you're not ready to rock and roll yet. Give us a couple of days to validate you to the system. So my team has to go in and confirm that you are the commander, or if you are a commander of some chapter, or whatever it might be, because all of this stuff 
is roles based. Okay, so a department officer has more access than a chapter officer has more access than a general member. Okay, uh, as uh, every member in your organization has access to mydea.org. If you're just a, a regular member, um, you know you'll have access to your own information. If you have outstanding payments in your membership, you'll be able to make payments. Um, if you want to fill out a transfer form and transfer to another chapter, you'll be able to do that there. Uh, you'll be able to update your service record. If we've got your name wrong, you'll be able to edit that stuff and correct it, okay? So, um, you know, look at that service record info, update all that good stuff, let us know if we have something that's wrong, uh, and we'll get you figured out. Um, and it's all automated. It's a self-service site. Uh, so if you forget your password, all you do is you put your email address, you need to log in with it, and you can reset your password. You don't have to call the membership department to, to do that. So if you get, you're trying to do some work on the weekend, uh, if you forgot your password, we can get it reset and keep rocking and rolling. So as I mentioned, you know, there's the first, uh, first email you get, and then you'll get a second email uh, letting you know that you've been validated in the system. So this is the replacement for our members and members leaders into what used to be the membership system. So the old legacy membership system is no more. Uh, we can combine, uh, you know, many legacy memberships, our legacy systems at the EV headquarters into one system. Uh, so we're tackling some some of that, you know, transitional growth that we have to go through. Uh, so please continue to be patient with us. You know, we combine membership and voluntary services and fundraising. Uh, there are some kinks you have to work through with the data. Our team is doing an amazing job uh, overcoming those hurdles. Uh, but if you see something out there that just doesn't look right, shoot me an email and give me a call and we'll, we'll uh, get it fixed for you. Um, so when you get into uh, into uh, my media, or this is essentially what, you, what you'll see, uh, these tiles here. Um, so again, the username and password that you created whenever you, uh, you signed up, uh, you just plug those in and that'll uh, it'll take you in there. You can either, you know, uh, favorite that web page. Uh, you can also just go to dev.org and then resources and scroll down a little bit. The login for my dev.org is there as well. Um, but uh, you can see all the different tiles that you have access to. The, the one that our member leaders are usually most interested in is there at the bottom right, the reports repository. Uh, so right now we've got the population summaries, membership lists, um, a couple few other reports in there uh, that are useful to you. And we've got a few more coming here at ASAP. So um, very soon you're going to have all of the capabilities that you had in the legacy membership system through my uh, You know, teach a, a man or a woman to fish, right? That's what we're trying to do. Um, I want to make, make sure you're all as self-sufficient as possible. Not that I don't like you calling us. Robin doesn't like you calling us, but I do. No. <laughs> I'm teasing. She loves you guys. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're going to get you up and running, and you should have every single capability, uh, ultimately, that you have in, in the latency system. There's something, if there's something that uh, we're not going to give to you for a particular reason, Security issues or something, I'll let you know about that going forward. But uh, slow and steady wins the race here. Again, I continue to appreciate your patience. Um, finishing up here, uh, so I want to remind everybody about uh, DB member advantages. Um, so, for those of you who looked at our member advantages page in the past, we usually had about a baker's dozen or so of companies that we aligned with to offer uh, DB members special discounts. Um, wasn't a ton of folks, and those uh, relationships took a lot of time, energy, and finance to maintain. Um, and frankly, just our members, for whatever reason, weren't attracted to some of that stuff. Uh, we had a terrific deal from Identity Bar, you know, the uh, theft, uh, identity theft protection company. Uh, they gave us the world uh, for their stuff, and hardly anybody used it. Um, and that relationship, you know, took a, 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 a lot to, to bring to fruition. So it was, um, we made a decision about a year and a half ago or so 
uh, to go to what they call the white label program. So literally through the member advantage program, you all have access to thousands of benefits, not just a dozen or so. Um, what's great about this, it, the app is available to both the majority and the Apple Store. Uh, so you, if you go to dme.org, the uh, dme.enjoyideals.com, um, you sign up, uh, we, uh, you plug in your, your email address and your membership number, you create a password, that's all you need to do. Once they validate that you are a member of DAD, um, you just go ahead and uh, download the app to your phone or pad. Uh, use that uh, email address and username that you signed up with. Uh, you no longer need your membership number at that point. Uh, you'll then see the DAD branded My Deals app. Uh, within your, your phone, and um, it is so awesome. I've tried this two or three times around my place. Not only do you have as, asset, uh, access to discounts from local or from national and regional vendors, but you also could have access to local vendors if they cut a deal with, um, with uh, access. So access is a company, pardon me, that uh, you know, we're working with for this. Um, but literally, within uh, three miles of my home there in, early, uh, in Florence, Kentucky, uh, there's two or three shops uh, that are engaged in this, you know, a couple of eateries and, and a drive -thru. So everything, retail, uh, we call it, you know, eat, play, more, right? Uh, and what's awesome, it's mostly the, um, the uh, travel stuff, hotel reservations, flight reservations, all that and stuff. We have affinity agreements with them where if you book your trip uh, through the My Deals app, you'll get the discount, but then also DAV gets paid uh, a portion of that proceed to then turn, you know, run back into DAV's programs and services. So it is a, uh, a double trip benefit. So it's great stuff. Again, if you have any questions on this, uh, let me know. If, uh, just be aware, wary. I want you to use this. This should be one of those arrows in your recruiting quiver, right? Just make sure you're explaining to folks that it could take a week or two for us to get your membership application process, especially if you don't sign up online, uh, and get that information to access so they can upload you uh, for eligibility in the system. So if they have an issue, uh, again, just have to reach out to get this work. Okay. 